Well, we enjoyed our visit to Milan. It was lots of fun, but now it's time to relax from all of this city travel and do a little R&R &R at the cooking school. <laughs> See you there. To get to the cooking school, we first had to take a train to Florence. The Milan Centrale train station is such a beautiful piece of architecture. I was really blown away with how stunning it is. I booked our tickets on Italo, which is a train company in Italy that's the bullet train. It's basically like the TGV in France. And I picked the club ticket because that then gave you access to the lounge. So we meandered our way through the halls. This is a huge train station. So if you've never been there and you don't want to miss your train, I would allow uh, enough time to navigate it. <laughs> we looked and looked and finally we saw a big panel saying that this is where the lounge was, but it was located up some stairs and we did not see any elevators. <laughs> so after my poor daughter spent the time to go up the stairs with her bag, we find out there's an elevator on the other side. Once inside, the club lounge was really fabulous. <laughs> and we just sat there and waited for our train to come in. So the big thing is to make sure you get to your coach before the train arrives because there's only so much space for your baggage. And we have three big luggages, so we just luck. So the monitors up above will tell you what coach number is going to stop there. So this is coach six and seven. We were coach one, so we had to keep walking a bit. And you can see people are already starting to line up where their coach is gonna land. And this is because of the limited baggage space. So this is a thing that for Americans, we always learn the hard way. A lot of Europeans will take trains for just a few days travel and they have these tiny little suitcases. And when we come to Europe, we're usually here for a week or two or even more. And so we have these huge suitcases that we're trying to get on with these trains. And it's always such a stressful moment. <laughs> Come on, I'm gonna help you. Oh, well, please. Okay. Grab my bag. See, so in our coach, this was the only space available for large suitcases. And then you do have some room below your seat for any type of carry-on. But the luggage space is first come, first served. So you are <laughs> smart to get there early because the only other option is the overhead, which really isn't practical for a large suitcase. And we were on our way to Florence that took just about an hour and the scenery is beautiful. As you get further away from Milan, you start to see the incredible Tuscan countryside reveal itself and I just couldn't wait to get into the country. <laughs> So there's a couple different ways you can get to the cooking school, but I actually would really recommend this way, especially if you're not comfortable renting a car and you didn't want to take one more train to Arezzo, which is the closest city to the cooking school. They will arrange to have a driver sent for a fee, but it was totally worth the money and our driver could not have been sweeter. He was super nice and took us into this beautiful residential uh, area of Florence and then up at the tippy top was the Piazzale Michelangelo, which he said we had to see. So I have to love the Italian hospitality. Our driver who picked us up to take us to the cooking school wanted us to see this view. So he took us up here <laughs> so we could check it out. It's so amazing and what a sweet, thoughtful thing to do. Then it was back on the road to get to the cooking school. It took about an hour and 15 minutes driving through some beautiful countryside and at some points driving actually through the hillside and you would get into these really amazing tunnels. <laughs> and just when you thought your claustrophobia was getting to you, not to worry, you would just see the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> The closest town to the cooking school is the medieval town of Arezzo. So once you get to Arezzo and you get off the exit, it's probably about another 20 minutes or so.
and then it's a little bit more countryside and then you really start to head all the way up. Some of the roads are paved, some are dirt roads. And one of the things that I have learned about traveling in Tuscany is the steeper up you go, the more you will be rewarded with a fantastic view. <laughs> one of the things that's so beautiful about this area of Italy are the hillsides. So if you want to see the best views, you've got to climb up, up, up. And just when I was beginning to wonder if we were actually headed in the right direction, I started to see a beautiful wow. old gate in the distance. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. What do you guys think? This looks beautiful. Okay, here we are. <laughs> It was worth the drive. <laughs> Beautiful cypress trees line the drive to the Villa Torre Tortufo where the Tuscany cooking school was going to take place. This'll do. <laughs> So we were put in the oregano suite, or I guess it really it was an apartment. There are a few of these on the grounds that are really great for families because it's like you're in your own little house. So there's a bedroom on the ground floor and all of the rooms are so tastefully decorated. It's really beautiful and you really have the sense that you're staying almost more like in a private home than a hotel. And off this room is also a private bath. So it works out really well for whoever's staying in this bottom room. And we thought that we would have my youngest daughter stay here because her suitcase was so heavy. There was no way she was making it upstairs. <laughs> so we just put her right downstairs. Then you make your way upstairs and there are two bedrooms at the top of the stairs. I took the one to the left, which I thought was beautiful because again, you have a beautiful view out the window a shame my husband didn't come but this was meant to be a mommy and me trip with just me and the girls and truth be told he doesn't cook so the thought of spending a few days at a cooking school just <laughs> it's not his idea of fun although you don't have to cook and participate at the cooking school you can just sit by the pool and eat all the meals and we actually had a participant that did just that and then downstairs, there was a wonderful little sitting room with a beautiful old fireplace. There was a corner of this room that had almost like a little kitchenette if you wanted to have tea or coffee in the morning. It was really just so perfect. I just love this little cottage. Beautiful. So I have been saving up to come here for years because I have always heard about it. The reviews were always so great. And with this being my eldest daughter last summer before she heads off to college next year, I wanted just the girls and I to do something special that she would always remember. My husband traveled a lot when they were young and it was always the three of us doing little mommy and me days. And I thought, you know what, to kick things off, Let's do a mommy and me getaway. <laughs> and this seemed like just the spot. Okay, then we had to head down and check out the pool. The pool is just striking. It is such a spectacular setting, especially this time of night when the sun is going down. The light in this area of Tuscany is just beautiful. You see the hills in the distance, the sun is setting, and I have to say, I love these trees that have been clipped to function like umbrellas when you're sitting under them during the day. It's so fabulous. We all could not wait to get ourselves down here in the morning. This is part of the great thing about the cooking school is you have your mornings free to sit by the pool, exercise, take in the scenery, and then you cook in the afternoon and then you eat for dinner what you've cooked. So it really is a great mix of relaxation as well as cooking and learning. All right, now, this being our first night, there was a welcome drinks and dinner. And because I really wanted to respect the privacy of the other guests, I don't show them in the video. But this is another aspect of the trip, is you are gonna be paired up with people you don't know <laughs> to spend a few days with. And I found that to be really fun. We had an awesome group of people who also love to cook, love to travel, so you already have things in common. Look how cute this is, this little perch. This is a great place to curl up and read a book in the afternoon. All right, it was time to head upstairs and hear about the orientation and what we were gonna be cooking and learning and doing all week long. This is the chance where we got to meet the other guests, have some drinks, and hear from Chef Franco, who was going to be the chef for the next few days, and he told us everything we were gonna be learning. I felt so at home in this environment. It was the most relaxing, restful place. 
Franco cooked us a delicious dinner that he said would be our last free meal because we were going to be cooking the rest of the meals for the rest of the time. And I was ready for it. I couldn't wait. The breakfast is set up in the kitchen every morning. This is the kitchen that you do the cooking classes in, and it is one fantastic space. There's all kinds of pastries and yogurt, homemade breads that they make on the property. There's also fresh squeezed orange juice, which is fun in the morning. A beautiful selection of fresh fruit. Look at this beautiful pineapple with the mint. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> and of course, it wouldn't be Italy without a fantastic coffee machine. So this is one of the things that my youngest daughter used to love to do is make it with his coffee in the morning. So you would just press a button and the milk would froth, the coffee would pour, and it was just really fabulous. Then the cooking classes don't actually begin until three o'clock after lunch. So this leaves the whole morning for just resting and relaxing. So we thought we would head down to the pool and check it out. While the girls went to go find a seat by the pool, I decided to go check out the fitness center. It's a pretty lovely little spot to exercise. Once inside, you'll see they have a couple of treadmills. In the next room, there's a stationary bike and some other exercise equipment, a soaking tub, some restrooms, a sauna, and a steam shower. It's really everything you could possibly want. I can't complain with the view. I mean, this is as pretty as it gets. This actually works out well because I can watch my kids in the pool <laughs> at the same time. They're old enough to know how to swim, but still, I always like to have an eye on them in the water. This is the perfect place to relax before the cooking begins. <laughs> here in late June and the weather was perfect. It was not too hot, not too cold. The other nice thing about it is it's such a large space that everybody feels like they get their own little private retreat. You can be there with the rest of the people from the cooking class, but it doesn't feel like you have to be social if you don't want to. You can just sit and relax and everybody just kind of respects each other's space, which is nice that you can have a little relaxation before you start all cooking together. That's the bell for lunch and it smells amazing. So the table is always beautifully set with little flower arrangements, it's so nice. The lunch is self-serve, so whenever you're ready, you can just walk right in and help yourself. So there was a vegetarian bolognese, there was a sliced stuffed pork, which was delicious, roasted fennel and roasted beets with a yummy vinaigrette and a tossed salad. It was exactly what we were in the mood for. <laughs> the other nice thing is you can then go up to the bar and help yourself to drinks. So they really want you to feel as if you're in a private home where you can just make yourself at home and help yourself. So of course my daughter loved to fill up her waters every day with the dispenser. There's wine, soft drinks, really whatever you want to drink throughout the day, you can just pop into the bar and help yourself. It's such a nice touch. And then of course, there's always some yummy dessert with every meal. And today, Franco made a fabulous flourless chocolate cake with homemade whipped cream, which of course was to die for. <laughs> After lunch, we could see Franco getting ready for the cooking class. All the ingredients were being prepared. So it was best to get upstairs and get ready. I didn't want to be late for my first day of class. <laughs> Okay, class is almost in session. So I've got my apron. They give you these nifty little aprons with your name on it. I've got my book. This is another great thing when you come here, they give you these fabulous books that have all of the recipes that you're gonna be making while you're here, as well as some other recipes that you can try at home. It's really well done, I have to say. Then we checked the blackboard in the kitchen for the recipe numbers. We looked them up in our books and it was time to get into teams. Franco groups you by courses so that each team is making a different course of the dinner. So to participate in the cooking class, the minimum age is 12 years old. So my daughter just made the cut and it is real cooking. So if you have kids that really like being in the kitchen, it's a fantastic opportunity. But I'll be honest, it's four to five hours in the kitchen. So they have to really be into it and be willing to kind of stick it out with the adults. But Franca was really great with her and treated her just like one of the adults, showing her all the techniques on how to make the gnocchi. And I think that that made her really engaged in the cooking and just made it all the more fun for her. Yeah. So 
So while we finished up on the gnocchi, the other teams were preparing the main course, the appetizers, and the dessert. It really was a team effort. But not to worry, with all this cooking, Franco does give you a break, and at each break, he gives you a little snack. And today's snack was some fried zucchini blossoms. How delicious. Then we wrapped up the day by making pizza dough in a very interesting way on the counter, adding the oil in the water and stirring in the flour. The pizza dough was gonna be used the following night for when we got back from our excursions and we were gonna have a little pizza party. But now it was time to rest up before dinner. After spending all afternoon in the kitchen, it is time now to taste the fruits of our labor. <laughs> I'm really curious to taste all of the dishes that all the different teams made. He said if we pop down early enough, we could watch him assemble it. Let's go check it out. Oh, caught red-handed. This must be her third Fanta of the day. <laughs> it's the April spritz we're getting underway. And then we could see Franco plating up the appetizer. He did this beautiful thing with these tomatoes that they cored out and filling it with the beautiful penzanella salad that the team had made. The sun was just beginning to set, the table was beautifully put together, and it just was such an ideal place to be. the dishes started to come out and were presented. This was the beautiful panzanella salad in the tomato cups, which was quite delicious. And then each dish was paired with a beautiful local Tuscan wine, which was really delicious and fun to try. Then our gnocchis came out and they were served with a wonderful leek sauce with walnuts, which sounds like a strange combination, but I'm telling you it was so delicious. Tossed with Parmesan cheese, it was really fantastic. The main course was chicken stuffed with truffle paste and cheese on a bed of vegetables and a delicious gravy. And for dessert, we had a refreshing zabayon with poached peaches, a little bit of cinnamon and nuts on top. It really was a fantastic meal and I only had to cook one part of it. <laughs> On day three, we took a break from the kitchen and we're planning on going on a few excursions. So this is one of the fun things that the cooking school does plan for you, a day of culinary excursions. So we loaded up on their cute little bus and headed off into the Tuscan countryside. The first stop was the incredible Villa La Ripa. This was a 16th century villa that has been lovingly restored by a local family there. And they have an incredible winery. In fact, wine has been produced on this property for over 2000 years. And they have a wine tasting that you can do, sampling some of their incredible small batch wines that is located in what used to be the former stables for the villa. It's a spectacular setting for wine tasting and it was so much fun to try all of the local wines. In fact, they do ship worldwide um, but they only distribute to people who come to the villa or if you're part of their wine club. So it was an extra special treat to be able to try it. I did send some back to our house in France because the shipping was a lot cheaper than sending it back to the USA. <laughs> They also make a spectacular olive oil and that was really fun because at least the girls could try that. <laughs> Then it was back on the bus and back into the countryside where we were headed to a cooperative farm that raises animals to produce their own cheese and cured meats. They prepared a lovely lunch for us that started with a delicious pasta. Then came the sampler platter of some of the wonderful products that they're producing on the property. Some of their delicious cheese, their cured meats, a really fabulous tomato jam, which paired really well with the cheese. And then of course, for dessert, a delicious light as air cheesecake made with their local cheese. Then we went down below and we were able to see all of the cheese production and how they were storing the cheese. It was really impressive to see the amount of dedication and artistry that went into this. Then back on the bus we went and we were headed to the town of Arezzo. Arezzo is a beautiful old town that dates back as far as the Etruscans in the fourth century. It had a very high military status during the Roman period 
and it's just a beautiful city to walk the streets, admire the architecture. There's cute little boutiques and shops that you can go into. Oh, I saw these baskets, but really, if I bring home one more basket, I think my husband will disown me. <laughs> so I kept on walking. There's also shops that show beautiful Italian products like pasta or sauces. I just could have spent the whole day in here, but we only had about an hour, so I had to get to the top. So the one thing I promised my husband I would show him when we're here is the square where they filmed Life is Beautiful. So apparently that's here in Arezzo and it is one of his favorite movies. <laughs> Mine too. So to get to the square, it's quite a hike up, but it is well worth the effort. So make sure you have a good lunch. <laughs> that's my favorite sound in Italy, the bells. We were there just after lunch, so a lot of the crowds had diminished, but it was really great to kind of get an idea of what the town might have been like years ago. And as I rounded the corner, there it was in all its glory, the beautiful square that's featured so prominently in the beginning of the movie. If you haven't seen that movie, it's one of my favorites, even though it's a little bit bittersweet, but I think the message is really powerful. Our guide at the cooking school was telling us when they filmed the movie, they actually had to get all of the shops to change their signage because it takes place in the 1940s during World War II. So the buildings were perfectly at home, but all of the modern shop signs and things like that had to be redone. Can you imagine what a feat that must have been? After a lovely day of sightseeing, it was time to head back to the villa. Tonight was the night we were gonna try our pizza dough in the form of a little informal pizza party. Franco was hard at work getting everything ready. Look at this beautiful wood firing oven. <laughs> this looks so great. I knew it was gonna make a fantastic pizza. The garnishes were set out and then Franco took out the dough. He took us through his tips for how to stretch out the dough, making sure that we get a nice round circle. He showed us how to put on the homemade tomato sauce that we had made the day before. And then of course, fresh mozzarella that was coming from the farm that we just visited. Then he showed us a few tricks for getting it on and off the pizza peel, which takes a little bit more skill than you may think. So it was very impressive to watch him do it because he did it as if it was nothing. <laughs> Wow, look at that. Gorgeous. The tomato and cheese. Gorgeous. We made a margarita pizza and a white pizza, which is just the cheese and a little bit of olive oil on top. Cuts it up and then we got to bite. <laughs> my little assistant took my pizza. Look <laughs> at we each got to try to make our own pizzas and one by one they started coming out of the oven. Two minutes is all it took and they were absolutely beautiful. Even my daughter was very impressed with the pizza she was able to make. I think it was really fun to see her little hard work and effort pay off. A great confidence builder. My pizza, on the other hand, had a bit of a different story. So first of all, I made my pizza and then Franco showed me how to put it on the peel. That was the first challenge. It was a lot harder to do than I thought. That pizza peel is really heavy. And of course, I loaded up my pizza with all kinds of toppings. I did mushroom and Italian sausage. So Franco helped me flop it back on the pizza peel. So, okay, it looked like that was gonna be okay. And then when I tried to put it in the oven, I couldn't get it off the pizza peel. And when I gave it a jerk, just like he had done and tried to to flip it, my poor pizza flipped in half and it almost turned into a calzone. <laughs> I need some practice. <laughs> it is six time. Look at my beautiful pizza. Awesome. The pizza was so delicious, Franco was able to flip it back over in time in the oven and it came out great. Downstairs, he was getting ready for dessert. We were having the panna cotta that we made the day before. I'm curious what the gelatin, I think it's the so gelatin good. is the way to go. The texture is beautiful. The texture yeah. is much better, isn't it? The texture is so good. Franco was right, it's the gelatin sheets that makes all the difference. We sat there and watched the beautiful sunset while the girls were in the hammock, and it just was a beautiful end to a perfect day. So we just heard we're gonna go truffle hunting, which should be really interesting. <laughs> So years ago, truffle hunting used to be done by pigs in this area, but then they found that the dogs were a lot easier to train. This adorable creature was the truffle hunting dog, but she didn't look like she was up for a day of work. <laughs> but not to worry, as soon as her trainer came and said it was time to go hunting, she sprung up and off she went. 
It's a really interesting thing to watch. It almost reminds me of my own dog, George, looking in the garden for his favorite toy. They have such an incredible sense of smell, dogs, that they're trained to sniff out the truffle. As soon as they find the truffle, she asks for the treat, and that's when we know it's down there. She wags, she wags. Must be something, must be something. Oh must be sending. Let's see if she asks her for the treat. <laughs> I'm not going to give you the treat yet. <laughs> you, have you have to wait. <laughs> oh! That's a big one. Definitely, I didn't put this one down. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's raw. It's, it's wow. a buono. No? But it's not very good. Very good. No. It might be half rotten. La troppa pioggia la deteriora. There's too much rain in the in the previous the kind of rotten. Right. At least. But she found it. Another one day. Oh my gosh, she's on a roll. Oh, I'm happy. Wow, look at that. Is that a good one? Yeah. Whoa. And do you need to dry them? No, no. We, we wash it with a nail brush and then we shave over the food. And it's ready to uh, go? Yeah. Wow. Tonight I can do on, on the ravioli. I will do on the ravioli. Okay. So then it was back in the kitchen. We made some focaccia bread from last night's leftover pizza dough. Then we made some beef rolls. This is how we're getting out our aggressions. Then one of the other teams made this incredible looking eggplant pudding that was going to be used as a starter. And then Orly and I were assigned the cannolis. So we started to make the cannoli dough. And for somebody who has always bought cannoli shells, I was really interested to learn how to make them myself because I have never succeeded. It has always turned into a bit of a mess. This is so easy. I've never had such success. Then we cut the dough into squares with this very nifty little pasta cutter contraption and wrap the dough around Amazing. the metal tubes. And here's now, what made this so easy. Franco actually bakes his shells in a contraption he designed himself. And that alleviates all that deep frying. It was so much easier that way, so much less messy and super delicious. We're just taking a little swinging break before we get to work on the ravioli. Let's go a hammock. <laughs> Whee! Then it was time to make the homemade ravioli, starting with creating the pasta sheets, which we did right on the counter with the egg and the flour. Then Franco showed us how to roll out the dough. We did it all by hand, how to put the filling in, make the seal. It was involved and I wondered if my youngest daughter was actually gonna be okay with all of this and I looked over and she was on a roll. <laughs> she was doing better than I was. It was amazing. It sort of reminded me that it was very much like Play-Doh and I think all of those early skills playing with the Play-Doh definitely helped her out here. Then for dinner, we saw all of our plates come to life. The eggplant pudding, which sat on a bed of burrata and a tomato puree it was absolutely delicious and so beautiful too. And the pasta course was our homemade raviolis with a spinach and ricotta cheese filling and of course as promised the freshly shaved truffles. The main course was a beautiful beef dish with steamed string beans and a delicious gravy. It was really fantastic. And for dessert, <laughs> little rice puddings with marinated fruit. It was quite delicious. It was such a great menu for our last night there. We had such a fantastic time. If you have a bucket list item that involves a cooking school in Tuscany, this is the place for you. <laughs> it was really top drawer. Then it was back to Florence to look at some more colleges for my daughter. One more travel tip for you. If you're traveling with a lot of baggage, don't take the train. 